Here you go. So Max, almost 30 years on from when you first started sp sprint car racing, we entertained the idea of a career in Speedway. There's now seven uh, World Series titles. There's multiple Australian titles in formulas and sprint cars and a business that is your whole life is Speedway. Would you have dreamed back then that this would be the way it would be? No, not at all. I actually thought I'd be into the sport and out within five years, and I'd meet someone, have kids and settle down and the kids wouldn't even know that I've ever raced. <laughs> that, that plan got derailed? Yeah, I got four kids that race. <laughs> Can you inherit sprint car racing ability? I don't know whether you can inherit it, but what I, what I have noticed with the kids as they watch, and they watch very hard, and they know things from watching, they know the difference between where you should be on the track, where you shouldn't be. Um, they just don't know exactly how to do it all the time, but they've, they've got a wealth of knowledge just, just from watching it for so long. Yeah, and all your kids are pretty handy behind the wheel. They all have different styles they bring to the table. Mm -hmm. um, Matt's obviously the latest in that. How do you rate him as a driver? Um, what are his strengths? His strengths would be not what I thought it would be. He's actually smooth. He's very smooth. <laughs> he's not the, He's a bit of a rough diamond, but he's smooth on the track. And um, he actually he goes well on the slick, um, which surprised me. Yeah, and, and you and him have had a couple of pretty good races, and it's been a chance for him to pass you on the outside a couple of times, which I don't know if you were too aware of that possibly happening. How is it watching in a race with your son? Are you caught up with what he's doing, or do you have to block that out? Um, I, I just treat him as another car on the track. When you're out there, you, you've got to. Um, I wouldn't go to, like, Sammy's length and take my kid out on the last turn for a feature win, but... Not might, yet. Might, might rub wheels. I've actually moved Matt over the other week. I just give him a little love kiss on the left front. He was quite upset about that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's good fun. A lot of people get asked to explain what it's like to drive a sprint car, and they struggle for words. Can you do it any better than most to explain why you do this? Um, well, it's the most exhilarating uh, four wheel sport I think he can race uh, I've tried lots of other ones and I just keep coming back to sprint cars I just, the power to weight ratio the manoeuvrability the opportunity to pass that's, that's one thing, a lot of the other classes of cars it's very hard to actually pass cars whereas every night we have to pass cars, it's part of the deal, you have to pass plenty of them so I think that combination of the car being power, great power to weight ratio and and being able to pass cars is enjoyable. Hmm. Do you love it as much as you did when you started? Um, I, I can say I probably don't. Um, I mean, I've do, done it for so long. Like when I first started, I was just totally in envy of any sprint car driver and anything that could happen. I'm quite happy to sit at home and race now and, and not travel so much. You're not as much of a romantic or as nostalgic as some people, so it may or may not appeal to you, but... In a couple of years when Marcus is old enough to race, there would be an opportunity for one night where you could have Michaela, Mitchell, Marcus and Maddie all in a race with you just for a one night thing. Would that appeal to you? Hadn't really thought about it, had you? Someone's going to get crashed. <laughs> as long as it's not you. Yeah, I don't know if I'd like that. In that wouldn't race. be special? Oh, yeah. yeah, I guess it would be special, but yeah. I don't know. That one's got your brain ticking, hasn't it? Yeah. I'll definitely, I'll definitely be on the track with Marcus and Matt. I don't know if Mitchell will be back racing and Michaela hasn't stepped into a sprint car yet. She's doing a pretty good job on the other side of the microphone. Yep. yep she's doing a good job there. Very confident. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, they look good. Well, good luck. And hopefully you can Vic one and two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you left the road to, to base yourself at home a couple of years ago. Have you looked back? Uh, not at all. I've really enjoyed it. Being at home, just coming home on Saturday night, not having to travel and go to racetracks I don't want to race at. I sort of said to myself when World Series started, we're going to make this sport better and we're going to improve things. And 
25 years on the World Series was the owner of Shit Hole Racetracks, which really disappoints me that we haven't really got over that and we haven't got enough other great tracks that we can go to. Um, yeah, so that's about it. When a car is awesome, when a, when a race car is awesome, do you have time in the moment to, to love what you do on the track? Yeah, absolutely. When the car is awesome and you, you know that it's awesome, like, like last um, Speed Week series, we had, the car was just a rocket. It was just taking off on the bottom so well. And to drive past Steve Kinzer and those guys here, and yeah, this is it. <laughs> it was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Jack Horden's child will be here in, a, in, a, in about a week. Yep. Who in some ways is a little bit like you, in that he's only known as one name. You only have to say Jack, yeah. and people know who you mean. His fan and t-shirt sales and his basic love across the board from fans to him is probably similar to yours. Um, do you feel any kindred spirit thing with Jack? Yeah, I, I was actually sort of crewed for Jack when he was um, out here racing 30 odd years ago. Wow. And um, Tripp went on the road with the, the Trossel team and Jack was one of the drivers and got to know him really well. And um, look up to him, he's, he's a top little peddler. Still after all these years, he doesn't back off a great deal either. <laughs> no, it's win or bin it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you must be enjoying racing at home with the way things are going this year with what Barry and Steve are doing. Yeah, it's, it's actually a pleasure to go to Parramatta and, and just see all the things he's done there and that, that big screen and the pits and just everything around the place is fantastic. Does anything scare you, Max? Um, I've got to say after crashing badly at Knoxville, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit scared of Knoxville. Sort of put me off a little bit. And that was quite a while ago. And um, I've got to say I've got no ambition to, to go back there. In the, the, the last few years of the 372 era, you were unstoppable. You just had a handle on the car. Max Mouse had a handle on it. It seemed to suit the way you drove. When it morphed into the 410 side of things, it, it, would it be unfair to say it took you a little longer to get back to the point you were at with the 372s? Without a doubt. We had a setup that worked fantastic in the 372, and for some reason, we couldn't get anywhere near that setup of the 410. We've gone totally opposite in the way we used to do it. And finally, sort of got a bit of a handle on it. I don't say we've Super great, but we're okay. Yeah. You, you've you changed your driving style in the last few years to, to run a bit more at the bottom than you do at the top. Is there any specific reason for that? Um, not really. Probably it's a bit, a bit more of a fine line run the top, and it's easier to probably crash or wreck yourself. And as an older racer, I tend to use weigh up the options of the safety thing. I don't really need to crash anymore. So, <laughs> um, When Rushy retired, he said that one of the reasons that he left was because of his eyesight. Because he, he actually, if he thought about racing with glasses before he decided to pull the pin, he might have stayed in the sport a bit longer. You wear glasses when you're reading and things like that. Has that been a factor in, in, in anything with your racing? Yeah, a little bit. It's, it's definitely harder to see the cushion read it like a depth well, perception yeah, kind of thing yeah read it as well as i used to but I mean, having, having said that I, I can still get up there and run the cushion with the best of them when i've got to so yeah i, I don't think my eyesight's really hurt me i think the the tear-offs we have now are way better than what were back when gary was racing gary said to me years on when he when he came back and tried to race with the racing optics tear-offs he said if these were around when i was racing i'd be still racing because you can put 20 on and see Whereas you go, Parramatta, you've got to put 15 to 20 on the old, old style tear-offs. Yeah. You can barely see out of the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> let alone see where you're going. It's getting to the point where there's almost 60 cars a week in the pits now. And there's some just really good young racers coming out of nowhere. Um, it must be exciting for you. It, it, a, it's almost like when you introduce a puppy to a Great Dane's life, it, it, it tends to give them a renewed... Um, challenges. Is that the way it is for you? Um, not really. I I think um, I just I don't really think about that. But I, I do think when I'm racing with somebody, who is that guy I'm racing with? Like the other week, I had to come from the back, and I 
I came from like 24 or something and I got up to 12th and I drove my ass off to get that far and I was passing cars and trying to pass cars and I didn't even know who they were like back in the day when I started you knew everybody because yeah. I think between New South Wales and Victoria and Queensland there might have only been 60 cars between three states but now you've got 60 cars turning up here you've got 45 at Warrnambool and 45 in Queensland on any one weekend so I think when I left Victoria, I think they had 17 cars. So it's mm. gone a long way since then. Now, I'm a West Australian. No matter where I live, I'm always a West Australian and proud to be. You would be approaching, if you haven't already, as much time living in New South Wales as in Victoria. Will you always be a Victorian to clear this up? Because it's often discussed. <laughs> um, i got, I got to say, I'll always be proud to be a Victorian. And... I've grown up on the farm. I've gone back there. So yeah. Um, how's Mum? Because she's a big supporter of your racing. Yeah, she's she's good. She's getting along very well actually. Um, but she's not overly keen about going to the speedway anymore. She likes to get on the laptop and Does she really? check, the, uh, check results every Saturday night and see where everyone's at. Yeah. So yeah, she enjoys that. How would you like to be remembered as a racer? I'm not going to preempt your retirement because I don't want you to do it for another 10 years, but if, if you stopped tomorrow for some reason and you, you had people talk around and go, oh, Max, he was a... What would you, what would you like to be remembered for? Um, I don't really know. That's not something I can, I can ask, I guess. Um, I would like to be remembered as being a fair racer and someone who achieved the goals that they set out to achieve. Um, I, when I started, all I wanted to do was win an Australian title and a classic, and I did that over and over, so I'm happy with that. When I went to America, I wanted to win a feature race, and I did that. So the only thing I'd never achieved that I really wanted to achieve was win an outlaw show, and got so close a few times, but never happened. You once said to me that um, that you're proud of the fact that you were never a shithead on the track. There was never a point where you overstepped the mark, disobeyed an official blatantly, or did something that would have ripped the fans off. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I don't take for that type of thing. It just it upsets everybody, and it just it puts the sport down. I believe it, that doesn't happen these days like it used to. It used to be quite popular in the old days for people to be having tantrums and stopping on the track and throwing their helmet and getting out and yelling at the officials and you just don't get away with that anymore so yeah, well fine. your table tennis partner Gary Brazier used to be pretty good at that <laughs> yeah he's had his moments <laughs> uh, finish this sentence for me Max I race sprint cars because I love it that's it 